Hello, people of God. It's good to be with you and to open God's word once again together. I want to turn to Exodus chapter 30 and to look at verses 11 through 16. Uh, verses 11 through 16, you'll see in your Bible, it's about the census task, tax. And we want to think about how uh, this passage teaches us about how God's people are to approach their God. So we want to think about these verses together. I'll read them and then we'll consider them briefly. And let's pay careful attention for this is God's own word. The Lord said to Moses, when you take the census of the people of Israel, then each shall give a ransom for his life to the Lord when you number them, that there be no plague among them when you number them. Each one who is numbered in the census shall give this, half a shekel, according to the shekel of the sanctuary. The shekel is 20 geras, half a shekel as an offering to the Lord. Everyone who is numbered in the census from 20 years old and upward shall give the Lord's offerings. The rich shall not give more, and the poor shall not give less than the half shekel when you give the Lord's offering to make atonement for your lives. You shall take the atonement money from the people of Israel and shall give it for the service of the tent of meeting, that it may bring the people of Israel to remembrance before the Lord, so as to make atonement for your lives. Thus far the reading of God's word. May he bless it to us. Um, as we've seen as we've gone on in the, in, the ta- in the instructions for the tabernacle, a lot of these things are telling us what it means to be qualified to approach the Lord, what it means for the priests as they function for the people. And now we have this tax that's speaking to the people themselves, that God is requiring a right, ransom price uh, for the lives of his people. Uh, God orders Moses to take a census, which includes all the men over 20 years old, men of fighting age who uh, comprise Israel's fighting strength, and each of them must pay uh, a ransom price for his life. And so this is uh, a symbolic act by which God's people are to come and to pay uh, this price, which is a ransom price. Uh, The cost is half a shekel of silver, uh, maybe a half ounce of silver. Um, And it was a small amount that was even enough for a poor person to pay, Um, And it's a small enough amount that anyone who was paying it knew that it wasn't really the price of their life. Um, It was a symbolic ransom price. God was not saying your life is only worth half a shekel of silver. Uh, We know that the price of a life is far beyond uh, that kind of value. Think of what the psalmist says in Psalm 49, 7 and 8. Truly no man can ransom another or give to God the price of his life, for the ransom of their life is costly and can never suffice. Um, And so this price was a symbolic act of ransom, not saying that that was the value that God put on their lives. And that's in part why everyone who's called to come must pay the same price. Uh, The passage tells us the poor cannot pay less and the rich cannot pay more. And what is that a reminder of? That whether you're rich or poor, your life has equal value before the Lord. Everyone is paying the same price and the price is being collected for a particular use that's listed there in verse 16. Um, You shall take that money and give it for the service of the tent of meeting, that it may bring the people of Israel to remembrance before the Lord, so as to make an atonement for your life. Um, This is also why the rich and the poor have to pay the same price. They're all contributing then equally to the service of the tabernacle, right? There's no There's no part of the tabernacle that has a plaque on it that this was given by a super donor. Um, That, you know, most of this was donated by uh, average people, but there were some high donors that paid this much. Um, Sometimes if you watch a show on PBS, they'll say it's, it was presented by, you know, this person and this person and this person and other generous contributors like you. Um, What that means is those people that are listed paid a lot. That's why their names are given. Uh, first before everyone else. The tabernacle is not to be like that. Whether you're rich or you're poor, you equally contributed to the tabernacle and to its service. And the silver was particularly used for the service of the tabernacle in the making of all the things in the tabernacle that were to be made of silver. And if we think back to the things that were made out of silver, uh, what was made out of silver in the tabernacle? What was the silver bases on which the golden walls of the tabernacle rested, those golden frames, Um, And here we see another level of symbolic importance being communicated to us. Silver was used in the bases on which the golden temples rested. So uh, everything in the temple was gold or the tabernacle was gold. 
the, and the gold represented heaven as we went through. We said the court outside is all bronze. We talked about how the bronze really represented the earth. And so what parts of the tabernacle are made of silver? Um, well, the curtain rings in the tabernacle court are made of silver. So that's the uppermost part of the court. Um, and the bases of the tabernacle's golden walls are made of silver. And so what does silver do symbolically? Uh, silver is what connects the earthly worshipers with the heavenly realities. Um, it's the silver rings that are between right, earth and heaven in that sense. It's the silver bases that are between the, those realities and the heavenly realities that rest on top of them. So what does silver do figuratively in the tabernacle? It connects the earthly worshipers with the heavenly realities and is the foundation on which the house of God rests. And where does this silver come from? Uh, this silver comes from the ransom price. And so we see this ransom price really serving an important function in, in, the, in the tabernacle and in its construction. This silver was given to, first for the purpose of accomplishing a ransom. It's a redemption price. Um, and from what? Well, we're told that it's a ransom price that averts divine wrath, right? What happens if you don't pay it? Uh, you're to pay it so there may be no plague among them when you number them. Um, it's a ransom price to avert the wrath of God. Uh, the same word for plague that appears here appeared in Exodus 12, 13. And when, when I see the blood, I will pass over you and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. And so it's the threat of divine, divine dest destruction, really, that's averted by this ransom price. That's why it's called atonement money in verse 16. Just like the blood in the Passover turned away, atoned for the wrath of God's people, turned away the wrath of God. So also this is a kind of atonement price uh, that they're paying to turn away the wrath of God. And the ransom price then serves as an important function in life and in worship. It's the foundation on which the tabernacle rested. It's the ransom price that meant life or death for them. And it's telling us something important about being an Israelite. That the most important question is not how rich you are or how powerful you are, or what tribe you came from. Um, are you uh, a high status Israelite or are you a low status Israelite? What's the most important question that really you can answer about yourself? It's have you been ransomed? Have you paid the ransom price? Has atonement money been paid for you? Um, and so this was to show that they were a ransomed people to remind them of that reality and this ransom people were also to show that they were a ready people um, each man was to line up and pay the price of his own life willingly and voluntarily right so as verse 14 puts it everyone who is numbered in the sentence census from 20 years old and upward shall give the Lord's offering um, there to cross over to be counted and pay the ransom price and it's a picture of these men representing the people as a whole, personally and individually, owning the covenant requirements and responsibilities. Now, they've done that already kind of corporately saying, we will serve the Lord. But here's a really individual way of coming, right? Each person, each man 20 years old and older, the fighting age strength of Israel, is coming and individually and personally owning those requirements, showing that their lives are forfeit to God and that their lives are subject to his commands. And in this way, it's a kind of enlistment in the Lord's service. And this too is a helpful reminder. They're not just a ransom to people, but they are to be a ready people, um, to be reminded that God's people, in order to approach him and live in covenant with him, must be ransomed and must be ready to serve him. Um, and that really is what's still required for the people of God. All of this was preparing them for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But as you came forward and paid that ransom price, as we said, you knew that wasn't the value of your life. That your life was worth more than half a shekel of silver. It was only a symbolic price, but it was too little to really buy true redemption and the true price of their life to make atonement and to turn away the wrath of God. Uh, the house of God might literally have rested, the tabernacle might literally have rested on the foundation of the silver atonement money, but they really couldn't establish the foundation of God's house. But they would see that symbolic importance of having given the money personally and individual and sing, sig, signaled their readiness to serve the Lord. 
and can see the silver's importance in connecting the earthly worshiper with those heavenly realities, but they knew that there, that was not truly the foundation on which everything rests. There was a ransom price uh, that they couldn't pay that would need to connect them. And of course, all of this was preparing them for the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one who makes these things reality, not just symbolic, by his coming into the world and paying the true ransom price for the people of God. Uh, that's how Peter describes it in 1 Peter 18 and 19, where he tell, says, Knowing that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. You were not ransomed with perishable things like silver. Uh, you were ransomed not with those things, but with the precious blood of Christ. He's the ransom price. He's the one on whom the foundation stands and who connects earth and heaven. He is the true atonement money that turns away the plague of the wrath of God from his people. Right, His blood truly ransoms the people of God, turns away God's divine wrath against our sin and makes a permanent atonement for the people of God. And it's his ransom price that is the foundation of God's spiritual house. Right, 1 Corinthians 3.11 we read, For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. It's his ransom price that connects the earthly, the earthly worshiper with the heavenly realities. It's his ransom price that actually lays a foundation for the heavenly realities on which they stand. He is the foundation. He is the connection. He is the ransom price that has actually set us free. And so just as the whole temple tabernacle service was shot through with a reminder of that ransom price, the silver on which the base is rested, the, 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 the curtain, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The curtain rings that were holding up the curtains, those connections, those important parts of the tabernacle, that was all ransom price money. Um, and, and any more silver that they collected would be used for the service of the tabernacle. You see how ransom price money was so important to all of it. And what was it all pointing forward to? Christ who would come as the ransom price. And God doesn't want us just to be reminded in this that we are to be a ransom people. He wants us also to be a ready people. A people who voluntarily and willingly come to serve the Lord. Just as all these men symbolically came and paid their money and enlisted in the service of the Lord, um, we want to be a people who are ready to serve. It's the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ who makes us ready and willing to now on serve him. Uh, we are to come to him voluntarily and willingly, right, to accept the responsibilities and blessings of the new covenant in Jesus Christ. Uh, we are to come in faith and we are to come uh, in gratitude to do the will of the Lord. And we are to be a ready army. Um, it's interesting that that Paul, when he talks about the armor, uh, the whole armor of God in Ephesians chapter 6, uh, speaks of being ready, wearing shoes, wearing as shoes the readiness given by the gospel of peace. Christ is also who makes, the one who makes us by his spirit ready, uh, willing and able from now on to serve him, as we confess in the first question of the Heidelberg Catechism. And so this tell, teaches us important things, that Christ has come to make us a ransomed and ready people that he might bring the realities of the covenant to us in this age um, as he sh pictured it in shadows and types previously in the former age. So we can be thankful that the, that the tabernacle and its service continues to shine forth to us those glorious realities of our Lord Jesus Christ. And let's go to God and thank him for this picture for us together. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this census tax and what it teaches us about the importance of a ransom price for our lives, that only through that payment, through that atonement, can the wrath be turned away. We thank you for revealing to us that this ransom price has been paid in these days by our Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray that we would all still be ready and willing to enter his service, that not just all of us corporately, but each of us individually would desire to be made ready to serve, that we would enlist in your service. We pray more and more that your spirit would make us wholeheartedly willing from now on uh, to serve you um, and that we would be a ready people um, as has been pictured for us here. And we thank you once again for giving us these many pictures in all of their different ways that pointed forward to our Lord Jesus Christ. Hear our prayers, forgive our sins for his sake, for we ask these things in Jesus' name. 
Amen. All right, people of God, it's been good to spend this time with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you until we meet again.